so this is a ninth grade mini inductive lesson by the ultimate Mr. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for the next slide. I'm ready for the next slide. Uh, use that to press enter. Okay, so inductive teaching occurs when the teacher provides data or experiences, Aaron, from which students can draw conclusions to uncover concepts or generaliz generalizations. So we've worked already on draw conclusions. Okay, the, those of you who were here during that time, we worked on it on the story what? Was it Mary? Like was nope. Mary goes. Mary goes. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Okay. So, uh, on the story, uh, Mary goes. We talked about drawing conclusions, and we said that drawing conclusions is an actual concept that we uh, utilize in life. And we said there's a specific procedure for drawing a conclusion. We said you need one thing plus another thing in order to equal the drawn conclusion. What's the equation that we said you need? We, we said you need what? Thank you. Okay. This is the stuff. This is the stuff. This is what we call this is what we call learning because you're constantly building on. So we don't teach things that you're trying to forget because then you haven't gotten out of a certain grade level. You build on. So when you wonder why certain things get more difficult, it's because you're not using your information that you previously learned. We said prior knowledge gets added to what? Oh, the um. No, it's anybody. What do we add the prior knowledge to? Facts. Um, Thank you. We add it to the textual plus. facts, the facts from the text. Once we put those together, our common sense or our prior knowledge plus the facts from the text, then we can draw a conclusion of what's to come next or what's written in between the lines. Okay? So that's what we're doing here. So it says that um, inductive teaching occurs when the teacher provides data or I provide you with experiences from which you can draw these conclusions to uncover what the concept is. So remember, I said it's the reverse. I'm not going to give you the concept. You have to be able to uh, figure out what the concept is based on the information I give you. Much of the learning that occurs in daily life is inductive. We learn most concepts through experience with examples rather than through direct teaching. So when you're out in everyday life, there's no one who's walking you and holding you by the hand and saying, Hey, little Timmy, this means that, this means that, this means that, okay? You figure things out on your own. You add this plus this, and you say, well, it must be that, okay? If you look outside your window, and you see that someone is out there, and they're shivering, okay, you might assume that it's what? Cold. Cold. You don't need anyone to say, Mom, someone's shivering outside. What's going on out there? Baby, it's cold, okay? You don't need that. You know how to come up with information based on your experiences now. And that's what happens in this type of a lesson. Okay? Individuals construct meaning best just in life when they interact with new information in real contexts and use it in meaningful ways. Okay? So this is the best type of way to learn for you to try to figure it out instead of for me to just give you the information. Um, at the top of your paper, you're going to write down this objective under where it says uh, word chart. So on your paper where it says word chart, just put it right up under there. Don't put it in any of the boxes. Put it right up under there. Wait, what? Thank you. So right up under the title where it says word chart, put the objective right there. Don't put it in any of the boxes. So the objective says what? In the middle. Jay. In detail, how a key oh, idea is illustrated what? and elaborated for what? On, its, on it a text. And what? Thank you. Yeah, so you're putting it right up under the title. Pardon? Okay, so thank you, Jalen. So we are going to analyze. Okay, so to analyze means we're going to think very, very deeply about and figure out what makes it what it is. Okay, we're going to study it and figure out what it is in detail. And this is what we're uh, going to analyze. How a key idea is illustrated. What does illustrated mean? Drawn. Okay, basically drawn. Okay, how an uh, how a key idea is being drawn together and elaborated on, meaning to give explanation on, in a text. So the text is your narratives. Okay, so we're going to analyze in detail how the key ideas in your narrative are illustrated on and elaborated on in your narratives. <laughs>
right, so on this slide, I'm gonna provide you with examples of the concept versus non-examples of the concept. So on your sheet where it says examples, uh, those are gonna be what I label as yeses. Okay, so when I provide you with an example, so remember what we're doing is we're looking at data, okay? And the data um, is what we have to actually analyze. Some of the data is going to be labeled as a yes. Some of it is going to be labeled as what? A no. Uh, no. Okay? The yeses are the examples where it says uh, on your paper you have the left and the right hand side examples and non-examples. The yeses are examples. The no's are the non-examples. When I put the uh, yeses up here, put the yeses in the examples box. You're going to write them in there. When I put the no's up here, write the no's in the nose box. Okay? Then we're going to get instruction for, uh, from that, further instruction from that. Question? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Alright, so let's get the first one. This is what you're going to write. Okay, this one is labeled as a no. So this is going to go in your non-example box. Okay? So write small. This is going to go in your non-example box. It says, Mary was a natural mother. And she found the children very trying. We're writing this in our first non-example box, because this is a no. Mary was a natural mother. Was she was Mary was. Oh sorry, was. Thank you. Mary wasn't a natural mother. Don't ever correct me again. Not funny. <laughs> and she found the children very trying. In the process. Okay, now let's go to the next one. Okay. So, all you're going to have, excuse me, all you're going to do is uh, at least try to get down to the question mark. In the same box? No, you're going no. to the next box. This is like labeled a yes. So this goes in the example the side. Yep, go to your first box and your on your example side. At least try to get down to... Why do you to, even write this down and you don't put this in here? Because this, because uh, because you can't, because based on the concept, uh, it, it can't be. Okay. okay. So uh, just get down to the. Um, can I write on the separate sheet of paper? You can write on the back if you want to. The same boxes are on the back. If you want to uh, continue it on the back, you can. Okay. So anyhow, so we have Mary. Mm, we're writing, uh, Marshall. We're writing. <laughs> So we have, Mary wasn't a natural mother, and she found the children very trying. Then it goes to, Mary couldn't believe it could be this much work. Couldn't they leave her alone for five minutes to read the paper? She put the cartoons on for them and giving them crayons and paper, but apparently that wasn't enough. They still wanted her. Okay. Now we have another yes. So this one, you're going to go uh, only up until the word happen. Okay? Only up until the word happen. But, but you're going to fit this in, uh, in your next yes box. So it says, when I left my office that beautiful spring day, I had no idea what was in store for me. To begin with, everything was too perfect for anything unusual to happen. It was one of those days when a man feels good. It was like speaking to a neighbor. <laughs> And proud of his government. You hide this man off the show. But you know so much. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this is a yes. The man. That was me. You talk. Okay, and then let's get our last one. Mm -hmm. I'm not done. Okay, okay. I'll be fine today. Okay. And then <laughs> this one is our last one. This is a no. And this will this will go in your second no box. Okay. So it says. I left work feeling happy. It was a nice day. Okay, so we went from, I left my office that beautiful spring day. I had no idea what was in store for me. To, I left work feeling happy. So I'm guessing. It was a nice day. All right, don't say anything I love. All right, you can't say anything I love. So you're writing this in your second box. Okay, so. Um, so right now I need all voices to be turned off. Once you're finished writing this, uh, these down in your boxes, silently, you're going to compare the yes and the no exemplars, silently. So don't mention anything out. 
Okay, this is what you are thinking and how you're thinking it. To form the ideas about the critical attributes or features of the concept. So remember, it's up to you to try to figure out what the concept is. This is just step one. So don't say anything because I need people, you're being graded on this assignment based on your thinking. Thank you. All right, so I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Um, and I'll let you finish typing in just a second. So at the bottom of your paper, on the right-hand side, that bigger box at the bottom, on the right-hand side, it says uh, plus five next to it. It says, I will remember this word by connecting it. Okay, in that box, you're going to tell me what you're seeing as being uh, the attributes of the yeses, one sentence, and then give me one sentence in the same box about what you're seeing or connecting as being the attributes of the nose. Don't say anything out loud because you're being tested on your thinking. So I need to know that this is what only what you were thinking and you alone. So again, in that box at the bottom, you're going to compare the yeses to the yeses and write what you notice that they have in common. You're going to compare the no's to the no's and tell me what those have in common. And then you're going to write that in the box. So just two sentences. What do the yeses have in common with each other? What do the no's have in common with each other? And put it at that bottom box where it says plus five. Okay? Sometimes you can overthink situations. Okay. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so now you're verbally going to label these as yeses or no's. Okay, so we're going to present them. And so you, what you've done is you've created a theory. You say, in theory, I believe the yeses have these type of attributes. And in theory, I believe that the no's have a certain different criteria. And so now if I see a yes, I can clearly label it yes. Or if I see a no, I can clearly label it no. I formulated this theory. Okay? So let's see the first one. So here's the first one. Okay? As, uh, so let's read through it. Uh, who wants to read through it as the Quran? Alright. As graceful as any queen with her head held high in the air and her long red tail, a perfectly arched rainbow, my little dog and walk down the table with her warm gray, with her warm gray eyes staring straight at me. On on she came to me just as I trained her. Walking up to me, she laid her head on my shoulders and I got my arms around her. The crowd exploded. Okay, so think based on your theory, you're gonna mentally label this, this as a yes or a no. So, um, who says that this is, who has, a, who has an, uh, uh, an opinion about it? Taja? I think it's yes. I think it's yes. Who says that uh, they're going to join Taja's yes team? Okay. You, you guys are very smart. Well, I'm only saying yes because they can have more details. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Jordan didn't um, vote because he has his head down or, or are you on the no team? Is this a yes or a no? Um, Jordan, you better say yes to your hand on <laughs> No. Okay, it's a no. Okay, so sit up, Jordan. Okay, so, wrong. Wrong. Sit up. wrong. So who's gonna who's gonna join Jordan's no team? Brandon. Okay, Jordan's no team. Brandon, you didn't have your hand up. Okay. Alright. So um, let's read the second. Let's read the second one. Taja, you wanna read the second one? Little Ann walked proudly across the table towards Billy. She did a good job. And the man cheered. Right. Okay. Yes. Destiny. Yes. Destiny. Yes. 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 Damn! This is a no. 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 I missed the bus. I missed the bus. No. no. Yes. So, yes. Um, Jordan said that this is a 
Jordan said that this is a yes. Jordan said that this one is a yes. Who's going to join Jordan's yes team? Nobody. You alone, buddy. Okay. Jordan's yes team. Okay. Um, and let's see the uh, the last one. Okay. I raced down the road. Oh, I'm sorry. Who's going to read it? I'm going to read it. Okay, Tremaine. All right. Hold on, 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 hold on. You are our portion for that song. Tremaine. I raced down the road. Tremaine. All right, see. Come on. I raced down the road. Why? Why are you waving my hands and yelling stop, stop, stop? But the bells rumble. Rumble down the road without even slowing down. Yes. Stop! Yes, yes. Stop. stop it! Is stop. this? Stop it! Stop. Yes. yes. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Uh, I said yes. nothing else. So no, I said what did I say? Yes. What did I say? Yes. Yes. Okay. Who's going to join Tremaine's yes team? Oh, I'm saying no. Okay. Team. <laughs> I'm going to guess the ground. All right. So survey says. Now we're going to get our answer. Survey says. Hey. Oh, the top one was a yes. Okay. The top one was a yes. No, I said Survey says the second one? No. No, hey. ah, the no. What ain't? Okay. Third one? Hey. No. We Last one. Yes. Hey. Hey. Yes. 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 You have two different topics here. Okay? These two topics, I mean these two bullet points correspond to each other in the same topic. So that's why this one is a yes in that topic, this one is a no in that topic. These down here are a totally different topic also. And that's why this one is a no on this topic, this one is a yes. So what you would do is take a few seconds to uh, see the similarities between these two yeses in their respective topics and then these two no's. And then what else can you say about the yeses and the no's? So, for... Uh, before I tell you what the concept is, I'm not going to tell you what the concept is yet. So, um, what I want you to do for homework is to, um, we'll, we'll do this one later, okay? But what I want you to do on the other side, you're going to take this home and bring it back. On the other side where it says, I will probably find this word, I will probably find this word in that left hand box, you're going to describe in writing your thoughts on how you formed your your definitions and labels and how you tested them when the new exemplars were given. So when we just did the label prompt, the, yeah. the label slide, okay? How did you use your theory on the left? You told me to use my other boxes. On the No, you, <laughs> oh. you probably used the ones on the back. Okay? But you were supposed God bless you. You were supposed to write your theory of what do you think the yeses had in common and the no's in common with on the right hand side on the bottom. You're supposed to write that there. On the left hand side, for homework, you're just going to describe your thinking and how you went about analyzing the new ones that we labeled. Oh, okay. So how did you go about making that decision? Like, no, that's the yes. No, no, that one is a no. How did you go about making that decision? You're going to write that in your uh, left hand box. Okay? You're going to write that in your left hand box. Any questions? about what the homework is. You're going to bring this back tomorrow. Oh, back. And then we'll find out what the concept actually back. is. Now, you should have done this part. So, we were supposed to generate more exemplars or examples. So, you were supposed to go to your um, narrative. You were supposed to pull out your narrative and you were supposed to select a sentence that actually... Well, it could have been any sentence that you wanted. Oh. So if I go to my um, narrative, I can pick any sentence that I want, and I'm going to put it on the paper where it says plus three. So right in the middle of the paper, that's where I'm going to write whatever sentence that I want from my narrative. How many people uh, did that so far? Okay, if you didn't have your narrative, how many people created, uh, created a sentence? That is? Okay, good. So then... You were supposed to label that sentence. You were supposed to label it as a yes or no. So whatever sentence that you pick from your narrative, you put it right here in the arrow, and you said this belongs to the yes category. Because of the attributes that I've seen with the yeses, I can uh, confirm that this relates to the yeses. And then what you would do is edit that same exact sentence to make it a no. Jordan, I need you to sit up. So you would edit that same exact sentence to make it a no. You want to have a good day? No. You want to go see your counselor? Yes. Write it fast. I'll sign it.
Um, so, if I label my sentence that I put on here as a yes, then I need to write the um, opposite of it. So what have we noticed about the uh, the yeses? QD. They show more traditional what they're doing and stuff like that. They show more possession of what they're doing. So uh, meaning they show more ownership of what's taking place in uh, those paragraphs. Okay? As opposed to um, the nose, which uh, is probably unclear what's going on. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how can we? Um, so how can we restate that? So that that was good, but how can we uh, state that in different words? So he said, so he said that the yeses are showing more ownership over what they're doing um, in their statements, whereas the no's aren't really uh, taking ownership uh, over what they're doing in their statements. How can we restate that to be a little bit more clear for us? What are the yeses doing? The yeses are showing way more detail. Okay, the yeses are showing more detail. And I think that's where we see the ownership over them is because the detail uh, brings the clarity. Okay? So the no's are doing what? Not showing a lot of detail. The no's are not showing a lot of detail. We just, right, it's, it's just a, a few words and we don't get the gist of what's going on. End them. Okay? So, um, if I labeled my sentence that I put on here for my narrative as a yes, then that means that I'm, uh, I've picked a sentence that has a lot of detail in it. A lot of detail. And now I have to write the opposite of it. I have to scale that same exact sentence down to something smaller. To something smaller. It's saying the same exact thing, just not using as many words. Or if I pick the sentence out of my narrative and I said that this is a no, this is an example of a no, that means I got to beef it up and put more detail in it. Okay, so it can show more ownership over the topic that it's discussing. Okay, we did this one yesterday. Okay, um, and that's the one that the um, absent people should be working on right now. So now, um, I'm going to share with you what the concept is. Okay? Does anyone want to uh, take a stab at what they think the concept is? Yeah. Any break person want to take a stab at what the concept is? What do you think the concept is, the overall moral of this story? What's the main idea of this lesson? Showing you the difference between, like, is this or the attribute? No. Okay, showing you the uh, difference between the good sentences that you're using in your writing or the bad ones. So what would be considered the good ones? Yes. The yeses, okay, which we've identified as what? Showing more detail. Showing more detail. Okay. All right. Good. And the uh, word here is show. So here's the concept and the definition. Concept is first. So you're going to write this down in the uh, box on your paper where it says word. So uh, pick a sentence out of there. So in the box on your uh, paper where it says word, you're going to write down show rather than tell. That's the concept. Show rather than tell. And then I'm going to give you the definition for it. So right in the middle where it says word, you're putting show rather than tell. Mario, we'll write this down. Show rather than tell in that middle box where it says word. <coughs> in the middle box where it says word, you're putting show rather than tell. Okay? Got it down? Here's the definition for it. So this is going to go in the definition box. What I do with this, what I Camara, what does this say? What I do with the truth. I have to explain that in a few minutes. This goes in the definition box. Uh, Kamara, what does it say? Okay, thank you. So, show. Don't tell me what it says. Show the reader through your words what you want them to see. Don't just tell about it. 
Don't just tell them about it. So just like we said yesterday, in your objective, we said that we want to analyze in detail how the key ideas are illustrated in your writing. And we said, I said, what does illustrated mean? And um, people said, to draw. And I said, yeah, to draw, but not literally. In English, it means to draw figuratively. So we're not talking about painting um, an actual picture for your uh, readers. You're showing us through your words. So you're painting a picture with your words. So that goes in the definition box. All of that goes in the definition box. And then here's just a little bit more information on it. Okay. Quran. What does the bottom part say? The idea is the idea is if you tell someone something, they might remember it, remember it, and they might believe it, or they might not believe it, or they might not. If you show them it, if you show them it, so that they can see it, they can see it in their own way, not in its eyes. They they are more likely to remember it, and more importantly, believe it. Okay, great. So. This is what we talk about when we're talking about revising. So we said in the revision process of your writing, you might only have three paragraphs. You might say, Mr. Kelly, I don't know how to get to that, those seven paragraphs that you want us to write. All I can come up with is three paragraphs. Well, you might want to add more detail to your writing. You might need to elaborate on some things. Just like we said in our objective, you might want to spend some time elaborating on, on some things. You may not have spent enough time describing the place, describing your characters and their uh, actual personalities. You probably haven't done all that. But maybe you, you're on the opposite side of the spectrum. Maybe you have 10 pages so far. And all I said was seven paragraphs. So what you need to do is scale down now. Okay, you need to turn some of those uh, uh, detailed sentences into some of the no type of category sentences. You, you've written way too much. You need to hurry up and bring this puppy to a close. Okay, so um, the idea is you know, if somebody farted, you know, you can say, uh, Destiny farted last hour, and it really stunk up the classroom. That's just telling. Or you can say, uh, she farted Destiny last farted last, last, last hour, and man, it smelled like the worst thing I ever smelled in my entire life. It was like three dozen garbage trucks were right outside the doors of Henry Ford. And it's like they're uh, sending off their own little poop smells and sending it right up through the classroom windows. And then they birthed their own little poop smells and it got into our nostrils and we farted and it all mixed together to create and combine another fart. That's how bad it smelled. Okay, so then we're using that sensory imagery to kind of get an uh, uh, um, example or a sense for how bad it was. Okay, we're trying to show in our words instead of tip. All right. So, I'm, when you go through the revising, we'll work on revising tomorrow after the uh, vocabulary quiz. But when you go through the revising of your narrative, what I want you to do is, for one thing, don't start all over with a new narrative. Reread over it. Find out whether or not you need to add more detail in certain areas. Find out whether you need to add dialogue in certain areas. Okay, remember that's a part of your rubric. You should have uh, details and dialogue, but also, what I want you to do is to add six of your vocabulary words, okay? So you can pick any six out of the 24 that you want, but just like we write a sentence for them for our quizzes, you're gonna write, um, you're gonna include them into your narrative. Six, any six of these vocabulary words should fit in there and they should make sense in there, okay? Now, does anyone want, uh, does anyone want extra credit um, on their narrative? You want extra credit? you're going to add an appositive phrase into your narrative. We said an appositive, if you were here for the appositive phrase assignment from grammar, we said an appositive phrase is when you include uh, added information about a noun right next to it. So you, you would have, you know, you probably have Brandon, comma, student at Henry Ford High, comma, um, had a great day in school today you know, whatever, but um, so that is that added description of whatever that noun is that you're talking about, you put it in parentheses. So if you want extra credit, you will put at least two positive phrases in your um, narrative and underline them. Okay?
All right. Um, 